Welcome back to this series. Great to have you back on board. Thus far in this series, we created a backend with Laravel, which allows us to store quotes and fetch those quotes. And we added a front end with both Angular 2 and Vue.js. Now with that out of the way, there is one thing I want to dive in right now before we then have a look at how we could also implement Vue.js with Laravel. We'll do this later in the series. Before that, let's have a look at authentication. Here's our Angular 2 app. It looks kind of similar to the Vue.js app, of course. Now we can create new quotes there, a new quote, send them to the server, and yeah, it was created. And if we go to quotes and get the quotes, here's our new quote, and then we can edit it like this. Oops, uh, maybe also hit the save button though. So like this, and if we reload the application, get quotes again, we see our change was indeed stored on the server and so on, so that all works. Now imagine we wanna protect this whole application behind like a authentication check. So only signed up or signed in users should be able to add quotes and to add and delete them. Maybe it's possible to view the quotes, but you shouldn't be able to, well, do all the stuff which changes them. So this is what we're going to have a look at in this video and mostly in the next videos. But first, let's understand how authentication really works in such a setup where we have kind of two different ends, our front end using Angular or Vue and our back end driven by Laravel. Let's understand how that works. To best understand how authentication works in such a setup where we have a separated back end and front end, Let's compare it to the default setup, the traditional setup you might know from a full stack application where you have Laravel on the back end and also have Laravel render some views possibly through the Blade templating engine. So where your whole application is driven by Laravel. I've got a lot of videos showing this approach on this channel. Now in this approach, authentication looks like this. The user sends the authentication data because it was entered in some form and then the submit button was pressed. And on the back end, on the, on the Laravel side, in the Laravel code, we will check that data, see if it fits a user in our database, and then we will create and store a session. And this is an important part. Laravel now creates a session and stores this session on the server. This is how sessions work in PHP, right? They are stored on the server. This is what defines a session. Now, Laravel also sends something back to the client though the session ID. That ID is sent to the client with the response of our sign in or signed up request. And on the client, we store it in a cookie. And for each request thereafter, when, whenever we send something to the server, well, the server is responsible for giving us back a view anyways. And since we also have our cookie, which we send with each request, well, Laravel can check if it finds this session ID on the server where the session was stored. And if that is the case, we know, well, this client, this specific client is authenticated. And this is what's very important about this appro approach here. The backend knows the client. So our server, our Laravel code on the server knows our client, the user using a browser connected to that server. This is key. This is the session driven approach, which you know from the other examples on this channel here probably. Now for our setup here, where we have a clear separation between our client, Angular 2 driven, and our backend, Laravel driven, we have to use a different approach because we can't set up this strong connection because not every page change is sent to the browser, to the server, excuse me. If we navigate around in our single page application, we're not sending a request for each change, for each time we change the page or do something there. So we can't set up such a close connection. Therefore, it looks differently. Here, we also send our authentication data because we submitted a form and we sent this with an AJAX request using Angular 2's HTTP service or for Vue.js Axios, for example. And then when this is sent, we check it on the server, but now no session is created. Instead, a token is created, a JSON web token typically. Now, there are different authentication approaches too. You might have heard about OAuth or about Laravel Passport, which is a 
readily configured OAuth server for you to set up. These are more advanced and complicated setups, which typically also involve having clients to register first or you registering your client app to that server first. For example, if you're using Facebook login, you have to go to Facebook, register your app, your Angular 2 app, for example, there, so that your users of your app can now use the Facebook sign-in service. So that is a bit more complicated and not something we're using here. We're going to use a different concept where indeed, Laravel, our backend here, will create such a token, such a JSON web token, and send this back to the client. Now, what's inside of such a JSON web token? It contains some data about our logged in user. We can also store some additional data in there if we want. The most important part is we create and sign it on the server with a specific secret, which only the server knows. We don't store that secret on the client. We don't even send the secret back to the client. We only send back the token which was created. Now, this token is then stored in the client, on the client, in the browser, in the local storage, for example, though you could also store it in a cookie. And whenever we then send a request to some protected resource on the server, so some resource which needs authentication, we attach our token to that request. So with each request where we need that, we attach it. And now comes the interesting part. Since this token was created and signed on the server with a specific secret, the server knows the secret and can now validate our token. So we can't send any random string there. Instead, we now check Okay, do I know this token? Did I create this token? And is it still valid? Because tokens can expire. And if this is all the case, if it is valid, if it was indeed successfully checked, validated, so that we indeed can match this kind of token to the tokens we would create because we sign them on a server. If this is all valid, then we return the protected resource. And if anything of that is invalid, if we can't verify the token, if it was or if it is expired, well, then we just sent back a 401 unauthenticated or unauthorized error so that the client either has to log in again or, well, simply is denied access. This is how authentication works. That's the theory. Now, let's see it in action in the next videos when we actually implement this approach, when we implement a third-party package on our Laravel backend, which allows us to verify users, to create such tokens, and to validate such tokens. So let's start with this in the next lectures or in the next videos.